Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is Refuge from Narcissism. This video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous. <clears throat> so I've been kind of laying low some more this summer. A lot, so much has been going on. Um, primarily my problem, my, my, I've been able to lay low. Thank, thank goodness. And trying to avoid that the platforming acts that is no doubt going to fall eventually so you know it's gonna have to move to i'm looking at maybe rockfin rockfin maybe rumble's just not it's just not conducive um rockfin might be might be the answer i had to have a difficult conversation with paypal they gave me a courtesy call because they noticed I wasn't using the account as much and they wanted to know if everything was all right. And I'm like, yeah, every, every, everything's fine actually with, you know, the business wise, but you know, based on what's been going on with the platforming and, you know, PayPal's um, teaming up with the ADL, like quite frankly, I'm terrified. And quite frankly, a lot of my subscribers aren't comfortable with using PayPal and the girl got real quiet. And I'm like, look, I understand this has nothing to do with you personally and above your pay grade, but that's what's going on. And she's like, I understand. She's like, I understand. And I'm like, it, it took me a while to even be able to tell her that because she was like, I'm like, no, no. She's like, are you sure there's not? I'm like, well, I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And like, I'm like, do I really want to raise a flag here and make them stare more at the, give, give the, the channel more scrutiny? Because here's the thing. I mean, I'm a loyal person and I owe a lot to PayPal for helping me, you know, with the, with the channel and everything. And without them, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. And a lot of it is, you know, it's just disheartening as well. But the reality is they don't want independent people. They don't want independent creators anymore, even though we built YouTube because they want to, they want to force feed you their narrative. And, you know, that's what they've been doing. So... <clears throat> Also, my friend, my best friend, well, you know, Tommy, you know, the drug addict from phone call from narcissistic mother. He's moved to Florida, um, which I had been trying to get him to do for some time. You know, I've talked about his problems, his drug and alcohol problems, you know, <clears throat> and he had, has it controlled for the most part, a lot of the time, but he has his, his relapse and. His father died last year. His mother just died a month and a half ago. A um, couple days after. Um, and I'm sure it's completely unrelated. Uh, the vaccine. And then she uh, had a heart attack in her sleep. And she had no history of heart ailments. But, you know, that's neither here nor I mean, I'm sure that's vaccines are 100% safe and no problem and yada 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 um not saying i'm just saying that's what happened so you know that probably added to his um he that added to his distress you know knowing well she had just been vaccinated and she's going to be okay now and now now she's dead you know she has a heart attack in her sleep <clears throat> sure totally unrelated to the to the vaccines absolutely unrelated um totally so um he had a relapse and um after she died because she had and look you know i've talked about his mom and his relationship his mother was clearly a a borderline borderline ppd borderline personality and What he did was, because his mother told him, if, and it was tell him from the time he was like three or four, that if anything happens to your father and he dies, it's, uh, it's your fault. Because 
we only have problems because of you. Same thing my parents told me. I'd be like, good, <laughs> die. But not him. Meanwhile, they're chain smoking fucking, I think they were smoking like Merits or whatever the worst cigarette you could possibly smoke. The two of them are chain smoking them all day, every day inside, you know, for 40, 50 years. So what does he do? He goes and he relapses to kind of prove them right and give them what they want, even after death, controlling the after death, making the narcissist happy after death. Sound, sound familiar? Well, I guess I'm just going to go be in here. Here, Mom, you're right anyway. You're right anyway. I'm just a fucking junkie. So I got a call from him. Like two weeks ago. <clears throat> and he was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die if I don't get out of here right now. And I'm like, because here's the thing. I mean, he got a sizable inheritance. He's, uh, we're pretty much, he could go and do what he wants to do. He can go and move and anywhere he wants. There is nothing holding him now to the Bronx because this, this guy's still sitting in the fucking Bronx wondering, you know, Coke is everywhere. It's a fucking, it's, it, it's a wasteland. And he had had a conversation with his brother and sister. He's the middle, older sister, younger brother. And they all felt the same way now that are, now that Marie's gone. Why couldn't it have happened sooner? Holy shit, it's like all that gets all gone. And that tension that they had between them dissipated. And they're like, yeah, you gotta go. You got, you're right. You gotta go. This is just go, go. Because he had lived down here... <clears throat> For like a year, for like two years, back in uh, like 98 to 2000, and he got guilty going back up to New York because his father was going to die. Meanwhile, his father didn't die until last year, you know, because he had had problems when it started up there, the coke, but he didn't have the problems down here because he wasn't around it. He had no need to be around it. So I'm like, yeah, get on a plane, get down here. Let's go. Let's do this. You know? <clears throat> so he could go to, because he was familiar with Boca and they have meetings in Boca every day, apparently. Not apparently, I know it. I mean, <clears throat> people come to Florida to rehab and to get clean and they're everywhere. So checked into an extended stay. Been going to meetings. Soon as he got off the plane, he was. <sighs> It was heartbreak. I will say it was heartbreaking to see him like that because he was in pain. He was in pain. Like he was blocked up from the cocaine, blocked up. Like he was in physical pain because he couldn't do any more coke because his fucking nasal has just exploded, and now was frozen. Now his face is just trying to to, to clear it. And he's coming down off the booze because he was drinking right up until he said he's like I drank right up until I nearly got on the plane and he was sweating and it was it was hard seeing like it was hard because as bad as he was I had never seen him like that But I got him, you know, it's not like he was like in, an invalid, got him in the car and started like, but it, like every couple minutes, he just started like, just, just went in pain from that. So we got, you know, <clears throat> got him back here. Before we, before I took him, took him up to Boca. Not that it was that far, but you know, I was planning on picking up Charlene, so she could see him, and we were all gonna go out to uh, go, obviously, go get lunch. And um, so we got back here, and he's like, you could tell he's just, just, just breaking, breaking down from the, and even because he didn't even have much any 
and his summer clothes, like everything was tight on him because he was bloated from, I guess, from the beer and the whatever, whatever he was doing. So I'm like, you got to get, he goes, I, I just, because he goes, you lag, oh, I'm leaving everything behind. He goes, I got to get by, buy something new. He was like, is there stuff? Is there somewhere we could go, like a champs around here? I'm like, yeah, next to the diner we're gonna go to. Um, there's a there's a sporting goods play like like you know, we can we can buy this stuff. So you know, he's still wincing and he's like, oh, and he's cold and I'm like, I'm like, can you even eat? Are you even able to eat right now? He's like, I don't think so. He goes, he goes, I think I'm just gonna get to see a crash and you know try to. He's like, I got to get some, something to try to, try to wear, you know, I'm like, all right, all right. And he's taking a uh, decongestant to try to release the, what's going on in his nose to get it to fucking bleed out. Cause it's like, he's wearing the mask on the plane and he's bleeding, he's bleeding. It's bad. So, and like the pain and the sweating and the, it's bad. Um, and that's when I said, and when I saw him, like, so you got to clear this. This has got to dry. He's like, yeah, because I don't know. I don't do color. I ne never, never touch the stuff. <clears throat> and I'm like, I know you don't smoke weed. I know you don't. I'm like, but I got these extracts here. And if what you need is the, the pain relief, I'm like, just hit this pen. <clears throat> Not this one. Another one. I'm like, hit this pen. Okay. Just hit it. Just hit it. And tell and he hit it and he hit it again and he sat down and within a minute he's like the pain's gone in my nose it's gone i'm like all right i'm like good i'm like good so i will take, we'll take it with us i'm like <laughs> we're good and um you want to go to the sporting good I'm like yeah we'll go to the sporting goods place and he's kind of kind of relaxed he's not wincing in pain anymore it's like so we get to the sporting goods place and it's like oh, everything's fall line. Even though it's South Florida, there's nothing really. <clears throat> I'm like, you know, you could buy this stuff on Amazon and probably get the stuff. And he's like, yeah, you're right. And he goes, he goes, you know what? I'm hungry. <laughs> he's like, can we eat? I'm like, yeah. And Mike Jory's sure. like, it's like, yeah, I can eat. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm like, that's why this stuff is medicine. I'm like, I'm not Abby. I'm trying to push it down. You throw and he understood that he goes, no, I legitimately feel better right now. And we went to the diner and you know, we ate, you know, we ate and he ate like he ate. It wasn't like, he's like, oh my God, I can eat. He, he was surprised. He didn't eat everything. Took it, took it back to the hotel and <clears throat> dropped it off. You know, you know, when I took it back to the hotel with him, when, when, uh, I dropped him off up in, uh, up in Boca and um you know we've been talking every day he's been going you know doing his doing his meetings getting around looking for a permanent place to live um <clears throat> which is another story I'll get into um of, of what's going on here as I expand on the uh, on the video so I've been spending a lot of time you know <clears throat> not a lot of time but you know time with him on the phone just doing stuff you know yesterday we met up again he came down went out he looked so much better he looks so much better more like himself and you know we went up to the beach to mcsorley's which is a beach pub the place that uh charlene used to work at you know, because he said he hadn't even been up to the he hadn't even been up to the beach He's like we're going up to the beach i'm like yeah he goes i haven't even seen the beach like, what are you nuts? He's like, no, I've just been doing meeting the meeting. <clears throat> you know, and then we got up there and we're sitting out there, me, him, and Charlene were out front under the canopy, but over the over the water. And he, you know, he's like, he's like, I should have just left. He's like, he's like, I should have just left years ago. She didn't die soon enough. And him and his brother and sister didn't die soon enough. My mother didn't die soon enough. Me can't die soon enough. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to give them that gift from fucking beyond the grave. You don't want to do it. 
And he understands that. And that's not to say he'll never have a relapse again. I understand that's how it works. It's, it's, it's a motherfucker. It's a motherfucker. But <clears throat> luckily he's still in a position that they were able to sell the house in under three hours. He got a quite a sizable bit piece where he can do pretty much what, what, what not not every you know not everything you know he's not a millionaire but you know not, nothing like that. But in a position where he can move anywhere he wants in the country right now, okay. His biggest obstacle, which is everybody's biggest obstacle, which my buddy, which my buddy Trav is finding out, who I talked about, who's going through the child support thing with with with, with his with his ex, okay, because his lease ran out, he was going to renew, and then the landlord pulled back the renewal because she figured out she could get a lot more from someone else. So he had to move out, and, and this is where we're at down here right now in Florida. And I've told you that my building has a waiting list, a waiting list of people that will rent these units from up north and other places in the country, okay, sight unseen. As soon as it opens, you got a one bedroom, got a two bed, I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. That's where they're at. Luckily, I moved in when this neighborhood was still kind of a shithole. So I'm grandfathered in and because I started paying when I moved in, it was 750 This unit now is going for over 1300 a month, okay? I'm paying just 1000 a month. Okay, I'm not, we're not going in because not going anywhere because the neighborhood is going up, up, up. Where we're at now with a lot of these buildings and landlords, you're now bidding for rentals, not to buy the property, to rent the unit. So, 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 so Trav puts in an offer, told me I bid on. A play. I'm like, oh, because he was talking about buying. Like, buying's out of the question now. Whew, property, gone. Buying's out of the question. Buying is out of the question because you're bidding against, you're bidding against trust, uh, not trust funds, hedge funds, Blackwater, Blackrock, not Blackwater, Blackrock, these fucking investment firms that are just trying to suck up all, make everybody renters. So now, okay, no, we're not. So that's out of the question. He's bidding to rent a two bedroom bidding so he puts in his bid okay and he gets notified well that bid has been you've been outbid do because of price cost uh you know demand do you want to submit another bid submitted another bid another a hundred dollars over what that's what's happening down here that's that's what i tried to tell you guys Get the fuck out. Get out. Okay? People, uh, the jig is up. The gig, jig is up up there. People got it. You could see they can yell Death Santis and Florida. It's not. <laughs> it's not a mess down here at all. Like, like, Tom was half expecting to walk into a dystopia stepping over fucking bodies at the airport. No. No, it's like everything's normal. Nobody's like when we walked into the store in the diner. Nobody's wearing masks. Some of the wait staff has to wear a mask. Nobody's wearing masks. Nobody's yelling at people about wearing masks. Nobody's walking around with freaking masks. Ain't happening down here. Not that masks don't save lives. They save lives 100%, and you should double and triple math, and, and Ron DeSantis is going to fucking kill everybody, and the dinosaurs are coming back. That said, everybody still wants to live in Florida right now. It is a mad dash that where people are taking or bidding on rentals. Rentals. You can't rent anything. So that's Tom's going to be Tom's biggest obstacle not going to be the great he'll be able to with what he's got coming in and everything he'll be fine like he'll he'll be fine so but he's gonna pay now 
Should have moved two years ago. Should have moved two years ago. Should have used a, a year ago. Should have done it a year ago. So, moving on. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Joe Biden and listen. Listen, 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 listen to me. As heart-wrenching and heartbreaking as it is, okay, to see, and I, I see those poor marine, Marines and the sailor men and the medic sailors that got fucking killed, their kids, the kids, the women there, women, women got blown up, you know? This is what they voted for. This is what every fucking time you see a Biden-Harris sticker, you see one of the, the blood is on there, it, all of it. They own all of it. That goes for the never Trump Republicans, your neocon Republicans, your Dan Cran. Anybody who's telling you to fucking. No. I was done with Afghanistan in 06. I've been done with Afghanistan. They don't know. They don't want freedom. They don't know freedom. They don't know what to do with it if they had it. This. What is happening as tragic and as sad and as disgusting as what ha is happening now in this country, it has to happen. It has to. And you know what? It has to get worse. Why? Because people are still backing it up. People have, nobody's, nobody's even been fired. Ah, why would you want him fired at this point? Well, you'd want him fired because you're afraid of an attack on the homeland. And again, I've said again, nobody's attacking us. We still have the largest military in the world. Even with the woke generals running around, there's enough people that you could fend. China is not invade is not going to do anything militarily against us why because all this shit is made in china go look at the high rise the entire high, china has a high high rise the whole thing you get a fire on one floor the entire fucking thing goes up like paper what do you think they built their military equipment any different it's china they lie they're communists they lie about everything about everything they say is a lie. They don't just lie about us. They lie about themselves. Well, so do we, but I mean, the communist just has no shame. As does the American communist has no shame. It's going to get worse and it has to get worse. It just does. You know, that's the, that's the sad thing. <clears throat> I'm not worried. Want to know why? Because these people who are trying to take over at the end of the day, when it comes right down to it, they're stupid. They're dumb. And communism will always defeat itself. And I've said this before, if they, and if they keep pushing it, the only thing that's ever, the only modus, the only political agenda that's ever been effective against communism is the big F. Now, that doesn't mean that you go off and pull off a genocide. No. They're not mutually exclusive things. Because I've made this point before. What war has been won, okay, without using fascism. Lincoln suspended habeas corpus, shut down newspapers, had judges arrested, had a Supreme Court justice arrested 
FDR interned the Japanese. What is the draft? The difference between what FDR did and what you know who in Germany did is FDR didn't kill anybody. <clears throat> he still used fascism. Still you as did Lincoln. Lincoln suspended habeas corpus. Everybody assumes he was just going to give it back. He was just going to give it back. John, and I'm not advocating what happened. Lincoln being it was a good thing. I'm not. But John Link, Wilkes Booth kind of put an end to that. We need some Lincoln-esque type fascism. That's just the way it has to be. What's coming up next is going to be worse because there is no difference, okay, between the tactics of fascism and the tactics of communism. The tactics are one and the same. So what's the difference between them? Fascism is just communism that protects its own culture. The communists only know how to destroy everything and destroy culture, and they build nothing. They build bland, ugly, th they have nothing. They're just destroyers. They're a wrecking crew. Fascism uses those, the tactics of the communists to protect culture. That's why Italy, even though the Italians, when they were fascist, they protected the culture of the Italians. Germany, as fucked up and genocidal as they, they became through Nazism, protected their culture. It was a beautiful place. The Japanese, though fascistic, in World War II. Strive. Why? Because what were they protecting their what? Their culture. The fascist that arises out of communism realizes, comes to the realization like these people can only destroy everything. That's all they can do. That's why the tactics are the same. That's why the, the, the Germans, the Nazis, and the Soviets, they did the exact same things to each other. They tortured the shit out of each other. They raped, they pillaged, they burned each other's lands, their people, they thrown in concentration camps on both sides. The Nazis targeted a religious group for extermination. That's the difference. That's that that's that was the deal breaker for the Nazis. Understand fascism arises out of communism. That's why they have been yelling fascist in our faces. Okay, for 50 years. Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Nazi fat? My grandfather fought the Nazis. He had two Purple Hearts fighting the Nazis. Cries every time the fucking National Anthem plays. And I don't mean to say our oh, fuck. I love the, you know, National Anthem. Nazi? See, again, and again, this is another point I make. We were, especially Gen X, we're miseducated. Think about our tech, the textbooks we had in, in grade school, in grammar school, in middle school, in high school. How much of it did we cover? A quarter, a third at most? For the most part, I didn't even realize that we were allies with the Soviet Union in World War, like in World War Two, like wait a minute, what? I thought the Soviet Union were communists, and there's this wall, and they're the worst people. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, that was that Eastern Front that was never discussed to Generation X in in public schools. The Eastern Front. 
where they fucking don't tell you that the Nazis and the fucking Soviets were were allies and fucked up Poland and that's where Ukraine came. They were fucking doing genocides together long before the German Hitler said, you know what, you can't work with these these communists. They gotta go and invaded on the Eastern Front. I am not, and I, believe me, I am not advocating for what the Nazis did, okay? Or Hitler, Hitler is a genocidal maniac. But you want to know where it arose from. Who made you? You did. You did, commie. You made this. You made all of this. And that's what they didn't want you to realize. They always realize eventually we're going to push these people to a point where, uh uh-oh, they're going to figure out how to use our own tactics against us. And I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that's what's going to happen. Because you keep pushing people and that's what's going to happen. The person who arrives, I'm not worried about the communists because the communist <clears throat> is incompetent, especially the American communists. They're more incompetent than anyone else. And thank God for the framers. Okay? Because they would love to be able to do in the United States what they're doing in Australia right now, but they can't because they missed a step in the United States before you can go out and do what they're actually doing in 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 Australia. And <clears throat> Trump thought the thing that was going to really drive people out into the streets in mass was going to be, you know, what happened. He expected that to replicate itself, the protests in cities everywhere and it and it didn't and it was never there is only one issue there is only one issue that is going to unite the right to the point where they'll be like fuck this now it's on and we know what it is we know what it is i'm not gonna say it we know what it is we know what it is it's the amendment they don't like to talk. That they, 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 they hate. It's the, it's the most hated amendment there is. They missed a step. When the enemy is destroying themselves, let them. As tragic as it is, as tragic it is as it is to see people fall from planes in Afghanistan. As tragic as it is to know that American citizens are going to end up probably being held hostage over there. And on the other hand, like you, and you, not even on the other hand, you hear stories that there are school children trapped there with their parents from California who went to Afghanistan on a fucking school trip thinking that's a good idea in the middle of like knowing where like cuz you're so you, you're so you're in such need to prove you're so virtuous and you're so above it all. we're not afraid and uh, you're a racist and I'm going to go with my your children you got school children from California <laughs> I don't mean to laugh. They're always the last ones to say it until it's too late. I feel horrible for the Marines and the service people who got blown up the way they... Because they gave up an air... I mean, why would you give up the air for... 
But that just goes to show you they're all incompetent. All of them. And to you Republicans and to you Q people, you trust the plan people, these generals were the people you were told to trust. These generals were the ones you thought were going to come and save it and save you. So you didn't have to get up and do anything. So you didn't have to make preparations. So you didn't have to actually go and fight. This is what you thought. These were the people you thought, these white hats that you thought were going to come save you. That's on you. That's on you. The Q stuff was funny at first, and like some of it seemed like, oh, me. And it just got absurd. You want to believe, you want to believe there's some good guy, but there's not. It's not how communism works. It's not how communism works. There are no good people in communism. There are no good communists. None. Zero. None. And it's time you start labeling these people as such. Communist. Why? Because it works. Because they love to label you. Don't they? Don't they? They love to label you. And unfortunately, this is going to get worse and it's going to have to get worse. It's going to have to. And that's a sad thing. If you can get out of these areas, get out. If you can get to a red area and make it redder, do it. Buy supplies. Make sure you have like at least a month's worth of, of food. I made sure I'm stocked up. We're stocked up here just in case. Just in case shit hits the fan. This is the world we're living in now, people. Had to happen this way. Had to happen. Communism destroys everything it touches. For those of you who watch my channel for the narcissism piece and want to know why it happened, how it happened, that's how it happened. Societal narcissism driven by societal Marxism and communism. That's it. So, I will probably be returning at um, beginning of September. You know, send everybody back to work. I understand it's slow anyway. I only have six stories in the queue. It's no big deal. So I'll bang them out as well. And I understand those of you who are afraid to use PayPal and donate. I'm working on some other options. Um, and again, I know. And I know I've been saying this over and over and over again. But God damn it is. It pissed me off. That after six years and now over 30,000 subs that I, well, and I probably lost as many as I have now because it's the way it is. And after all this work and all these years that I know that I'm going to have to eventually, they're either going to make me leave or I'm going to have to move on. So that sucks. So. That's what's going on. That's what's up. Um, kind of got everything out I needed to say. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And again, um, thank you for 30,000 subscribers. Um, it isn't the biggest base, but it's a base. And I'm awfully proud of it. And this channel has allowed me to live. And has allowed me to be able to take care of my responsibilities and very little people can say anymore about it, you know, about me and about the channel. And so thank you to everybody, everybody who's made that possible. So. The channel will continue to move forward. You know, I, you know, just understand 
when these stories about the platforming come out, I keep my head down. I keep my head down. If they're going to suspend the United States senators and Congress people, they won't think twice about knocking me out. And if they knock me out, then, then I got real problems. So thank you everybody for 30,000. I really appreciate it. Thank you everybody for all you do. If you can contribute and be a part of it and want to get a story in, if you just want to make sure the channel keeps going, you guys know what to do with the links in the description box. I appreciate everything from everybody and, um, I'll see you all soon. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been refuge from narcissism. Take care, everybody.